Hey guys, Tacoma Guy here. Today we're going to talk about uh, transmission cooling. <clears throat> um, what you need to do to keep your transmission cool if you're uh, towing or off-roading. Uh, normal driving, you don't really have to do anything. You're at, at the limit, but you're going to be okay. Here's your, if you have the towing package, you have this. I think if you don't have the towing package, you might not even have this little one. Okay, this is not enough to keep your transmission cool. It's just not. I'm gonna, I got the facts here to prove that in a second. Um, you're gonna need to add transmission cooler like this. So literally you just go on Amazon and order a transmission cooler, get one from your parts store, wherever you shop. Um, here's my Toyota tape ruler. <laughs> this one's an 11 by eight. Whoops. This one's an 11 by eight. Just single roll. Uh, I think it was 40 bucks or something like that. It, they're not that much. This drops your temp temps down from over 200 uh, to 130 to 150. So it's going to drop your transmission temps by 50 degrees for $50. So it's like a must do for off roading. Now, if you're crawling, if you're if you're in four low using your truck, you need this. If you're towing, you need this. If you have a heavy rig with lots of armor, you're going to need a transmission cooler. You're just going to. This does not keep it cool enough. This maintains your trans temp, I think, about probably 180, 170 to 180. But as soon as you start towing or doing things, your temperature is going to go up to 200 plus. If you're off-roading, you're not even going to be able to touch this thing. It's going to be so hot. I found this out. Um, I just did a trans flush, had fresh fluid. The next summer I went to the dunes, overheated my transmission, and it went into limp mode. And I don't know what it takes to get out of limp mode. I think it has to sit overnight or 24 or 48 hours and then it will click off. Um, so I had to change the fluid, it was all burnt up. I switched my transmission fluid and haven't had any problems since. If you're going to change your transmission fluid, now if you off-road, upgrade to synthetic, upgrade to a full synthetic. If you are just driving like a normal truck, who cares, do whatever you want. This is for the people who use their vehicles. Um, I use the AMSOIL. The blue is your Dextron 4, whatever it's called. Your fuel efficient, your Toyota transmission fluid is the blue from AMSOIL. The red is your Dextron 3, which is a little bit thicker, okay? I do is I mix these in the truck. I think I use 70% Toyota and 30% Dextron 3, so the transmission's a little tougher. The converter locks up harder, shifts harder. Basically, the transmission fluid's a little tougher. This, this fluid here can't take very much abuse at all. It's very wimpy. Um, it's for gas mileage. So if you want the best gas mileage, you use all this. If you want better performance, you mix, have to mix a little bit of the red in there. The red line, you have uh, the 4 and the 6. I only have a can of the 4 here with me right now. Um, the 4 is like your red, the Dextron 3. The 6 is like the blue, which is your Dextron 4, the thin stuff. Toyota Fluid. And, and then my, this is for my FRS. Those I mix about... 60% Toyota and 40% of the D4. So that one I run a little bit more uh, for harder shifting. The truck I just put a little bit in there to toughen it up. So that's the fluid. <clears throat> now we happen to have HP tuners available for our trucks. So we can tune our trucks which now it's very easy for me to verify what I'm talking about. So now with my transmission cooler, trans fluid temp is right there. There's a lot of ways to get. I got apps for my phone too. I can get transmission temperature now. So I can, it's very easy to change the fluid now. But with this one, you uh, now my transmission normally is about 135, 140. It goes into limp mode at 257 degrees. It kicks out of limp mode at minus 328. So that means just cooling the truck down is not going to get it out of limp mode. There must be another internal uh, calculation that we can't see. So after 
I think it was, I don't know if it was at 24, overnight or 48 hours. I think it was overnight the next day. I think it was driving fine again. <clears throat> I mean, it was a couple days. I can't remember because um, I think that was the last day at the dunes and we drove home. It was driving, just driving like crap. But yeah, it was fine. Change the transmission fluid. It's been fine. That was like four years ago. So I'm fine. But it's not going to automatically reset for you. It's gonna, you have to let it sit overnight for one or two days. I can't remember. But that's how hot your temperature can get with just the stock transmission cooler. So you have to add something. You could probably, you probably don't have to add one this big. I'm running both, which is probably overkill, but I don't know what the limit is. I guess now that I can measure trans temp, I could probably play around with them. Um, maybe get one just slightly bigger than this and just run one cooler would probably be enough. Or get one a little bit smaller than this and run both of them. Because this is probably a touch overkill but when you're at the dunes uh, it's not overkill I think normal driving and normal off-roading on trails and things that might be a, it might be a run on a cool side but for fluid for me I don't want fluid to get hot it will it is gonna hurt your gas mileage a little bit so now with winter coming I'm gonna go to one transmission cooler so this is my top line I'm gonna switch these lines this I'll put in a loop up here and in this line is my top line. I'm just going to run just the one cooler for winter. And now I can track my my trans temps easy. I got app. I got trans temp on my phone and on the HP tuners, so I'll be able to track where my uh, transmission temps are much easier now, without guessing. All right. So here's the result of disconnecting the second transmission cooler. Because again, I'm going into winter. Um, I don't do go to the dunes or do heavy off-roading in the winter <clears throat> and probably need a little bit more heat because it's going to be a lot colder. Um, but you can see the trans temp is already 30 degrees hotter. Um, and the only thing I do is disconnect that fluid and it's actually colder. This is 55 degrees. My other logs <clears throat> was the summer so it was probably like 75 to 80 degrees. So it's 30 degrees warmer out, and it was still maintaining 135, 140, no matter what you do. It was maintaining that just cruising along, but as soon as you start accelerating, decelerating, and things like that, the transmission fluid temperature went up. But the 164 is okay. Again, you want to be at 170, so this is probably more optimal for cold weather. we are right around the 160 to 170 for everyday driving. That's probably perfect. Um, so for light cruising and trail riding, this will be probably good to go. Again, I'm going to keep logging it uh, so I know where I'm at. But yeah, just disconnecting, just uh, just going to the stock transmission fluid cooler, raise the temperature 30 degrees. And this is in 55 degree weather, and this is just driving on the street. So now you put a trailer on, you start off-roading, you're going four low, you're rock crawling, that transmission temperature is going to shoot straight up. You're, or you're right at the limit now. And I'm just driving on the street. I'm not doing anything. Just just normal driving. Now with the transmission cooler, it stays cooler, but this Amsoil, it's four years old. It still looks like new. I did a three-quart flush, and there was no need to. It was like a waste of three quarts because it came out. It's almost perfectly clean. So that's what I do is just probably drain the pan <clears throat> every other year now. Switch, like Drain out and flush out three quarts. So that's it. If you're off-roading, get yourself a transmission cooler. Go to better fluid, transmission cooling pro or transmission overheating is, is, is done. You're not going to overheat. I don't know how hot it gets towing that. I haven't checked. It can still get a little hot with when you're towing, but probably gets up to about 180, 200 degrees when you're towing. Um, just off-roading, like I said, it gets about 160 at the most. So you're fine. Again, subscribe, like, and share. Thanks. Bye.